Hi, my name is Thomas Eger. I'm the author of creatinggreatsoftware.com, where I teach people how to design, architect, and create great software. Today, we're going to take a look at the different types of projections typically seen in microservices architecture. These are usually events, uh, event-based systems. So we're going to take a look at the ad hoc projections, the consumer-driven projections, and the publisher-driven projections. Let's get right into it. Welcome back. I am very excited to show you this section because in this section we learn how to time travel. How cool is that, right? Being able to time travel is, is a fascinating topic. And so to me, projections open up a whole bunch of opportunities that you as a developer or as an architect can provide the business a tremendous amount of value uh, and allow the business uh, or the customers, depending who's using this, uh, enable to look back in time, even if you may not have all the tools available back in time, but as requirements change, as you know, the only consistent part in the software development is that requirements will change. And so many times this also requires that some kind of reporting or some kind of analysis will be discovered later on as the system is being used more and more, if it's a new greenfield project, or if it's an existing system that you have um, rewritten into an event source, domain-driven design kind of uh, project. So with projections, it allows the, the business to look back in time, take a look at it, analyze it, and then create a report as you would have had it even back a year ago, if you started a project a year ago. So how, how cool is that? And so with that, let's take a look at projections. So what, what is a projection? It's simply uh, some code that runs through all the domain events and presents a state from a specific point in time, which is critical. That is what I meant by time travel. You, as you go through each domain event and say you're running the system for two years, you, you start from the beginning of time, <coughs> excuse me, from the beginning of time and then move forward and then take this piece of information that you're interested in and uh, analyze it. And at that point, uh, once you go through the domain events, uh, you analyze and, and look for some interesting information that you, your customers or your business units are interested in. So go ahead and let's see oh, as an example. So we do have our event store and uh, the first thing I want to show you is the three types that I call. The first one is called an ad hoc projections. That ad hoc projection can be issued at any point of time that you or your customers or, or your business units may be interested in. So um, this interesting information command gets sent into your event store or it ends up in the event store essentially. And then the event store will grab all the events for aggregate root number one, two, three in this case. And then it returns all the domain events for aggregate one, two, three. Let's not worry about snapshots or not. And we are just assuming that all events being returned. And number four uh, here, your C-sharp code will read through all the domain events and look for this interesting information and then essentially present it to the user. So we will see this, a mixture of this and another one later on, on the client side, on the implementation side, on how do we create a, a cool a projection. And so, uh, like I said, uh, an ad hoc projection can be requested at any point of time. It doesn't need any, any intensive uh, pre-processing time on the server side or cluster side, or if it's serverless, uh, it doesn't need, um, heavy, intensely uh, com computing analysis time, right, to do this. So the next thing is what I call consumer-driven projections. And so let me explain this, how this would work. Uh, so the consumer would start up, which is usually a separate system or separate service. And it's running on its own, right? Keep that in mind. It's running its own process. So the con consumer that is interested in generating these projections starts up. It could be a read model a service that where you are having a separate service to create reports for the business or for the consumer. So as the system starts up, um, 
the first thing it does, it will check um, what was the last point of an aggregate stream that it was able to process. In this case, uh, in this particular case, uh, it checked for the version and the last point or the last version of that aggregate root was version number 17. So that's what it knows, that's what it's stored locally. So it's aware of the last time it, it, it read the information. So the next thing the consumer will do, or the service here, it will go ahead and ask the event store, hey, give me all the events that may have happened past number 17. So starting with version number 18 is the request that it sends to the event store and then asking for all the events that have happened since then. So the event store will take the request and then then uh, provide all the domain events, uh, in this case, uh, since version number 18 to the consumer. The consumer takes the collection of the new domain events and processes it just like before, just like the other 17 domain events. And then eventually it will usually store this information, the analysis, the output, the report into some kind of persistence mechanism. Maybe it generates PDF files, maybe it generates reporting files, maybe it updates a SQL server or MySQL persistence to after it's completed the analysis. Um, and it more, most importantly, it also stores after it's done processing, when it's completed processing successfully, it will store the last version processed. And so maybe uh, it got another 10 domain events, so it got 18 till uh, 28 version number, and it, it stores that locally. So the next time it needs to process, or if it starts up, it knows, aha, my last process number was number 28 of this particular aggregate. So um, and the, the reason why I call this consumer driven is because the event store has no clue. It should never know who or how many consumers they are. Remember the, the event store is the source of truth for the business. It is no other system. Any other system outside of the event store can be replaced. It can be started from scratch and recreated from scratch. And so consumer based systems <coughs> or services, uh, you can add very easily new ways to process and consume and analyze information this way because your event store has all the information since the beginning in time uh, you can create new uh, consumers at any point in time in the future if you discover new technology you want to use and take advantage of uh, massive data analysis um, feel free to do so an example of uh, so how do you uh, how do you implement this relationship between the event store and the consumers? One example is there's a protocol called AdamPub, where you have a, a relationship between the event store and the consumers, but the event store really doesn't need to know who that is. It just needs to know, okay, uh, somebody wants to request an X number of events uh, and then provide that number of domain events. So here we have the third one, it's the publisher driven projections. That's what I call it. I don't know, I, have a, I don't have a better name for this. <clears throat> and so we, we're actually implementing this with, a, with the first one in a conjunction a relationship of that. So in the event store uh, commits a domain event or a collection of domain events. And after that is committed, it will go ahead and publish the event. And the consumer is one of the subscribers to this event and gets notified. The consumer then processes the domain event, just like before. And then uh, it may or may not ask for additional uh, events at any point in time. It's very similar to the second one uh, that we saw. The, uh, the key here is that the, the persistence and the publication must be atomic, which means they they must succeed successfully, right? So that this it's, it's two parts, right? Because the event store in our case is the DynamoDB piece needs to be completed. And then also the publication is important. So if a publication doesn't happen, the consumer would never be notified, which is very bad, right? So then that is why that the, you can implement logic on the consumer side that once in a while, hey, double check, uh, did I miss any consumers lately? Or, or you can implement a time interval saying once in a while, go ahead and ask the event store to 
to verify the number or the last number of the main events that I was able to read. And so you can do a combination of this. Uh, publisher domain event, publisher, publisher driven projections, uh, listens for events and may ask for events if required. And that's because it need, needs to internally check, hey, do I miss anything? Do I miss anything? Do I miss anything, right? All right, so next thing is we go ahead and take a look at implementing a projection. Uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.